Dobre jutro. Uh, moje imię je Hirkjan. Ja sam iz Amsterdam. Oprostite, uh, ne hovorim dobro hrvatski. So, um, I want to tell you about a really cool thing. Um, I work for Oracle. I've worked uh, for Sun before that. I'm I've been involved with open source um, for as long as, as I've been involved with uh, software. And there is a, um, a new solution for uh, JavaScript. Now, I come from a Java background, and I'm wondering how many people here would call themselves Java developers? Okay, how many people here are JavaScript developers? And how many people are doing Java, but are increasingly being pushed towards JavaScript or are interested in JavaScript or something, something like that. Okay, that's uh, it's different levels. It's kind of me. Um, I'm definitely from a Java background. I definitely think Java is a superior language to JavaScript for many different reasons. Um, type system, libraries, community, all kinds of different things. Um, but clearly JavaScript is very popular nowadays and even Java developers are trying to see what you can do with it um, in, in the enterprise. Can you do something real? Can you, do, can you write business applications in JavaScript um, for the desktop browser, for mobile phones, and so on? And um, of course, not just individual developers are asking that question, but also companies. So Oracle is one of those companies, and the reason is because of the cloud, right? Everyone is interested nowadays in the cloud and in data in the cloud, and not just storage, people don't just want to store data in the cloud, at some point you want to do something with that data and you want to create attractive applications. You want to create applications that look a bit like this, um, that have interesting, um, an interesting visualization, not just simply text in a browser, but you want some, some interesting uh, visualizations and you want components, graphs and charts and so on. So what I'm talking about is not a new framework at all. In fact, I'm talking about a toolkit. So um, I'm talking about something called Oracle Jet. If you go to oraclejet.org, you will find about, uh, all about it. It is a collection of open source libraries. It is not yet another framework. It is a collection of open source libraries like jQuery, Knockout, Require. And if you want to use those, those typical libraries in combination with each other, together with graphs and charts, uh, such as these, then this is really an interesting solution to try. Also because um, Oracle itself is using it. So this is the new way in which Oracle applications are being written. So if you have any um, knowledge of Oracle technologies, you know about Apex and about ADF and all kinds of different um, acronyms for creating uh, cloud or uh, web uh, applications in general or mobile applications. Um, but there is this new solution called Jet, which is already being used internally within Oracle to create all kinds of different applications. So um, here is one example. You can see it's a kind of a dashboard on top of Solaris. So Solaris dashboard is a browser-based application written using the JavaScript extension toolkit. And here's another example. This is another Oracle application written using Jet. Um, and here's another one. So these are all very graphic or, um, applications. You can see these are dashboard type applications. So if you're creating these kinds of applications and you want to do it for free, because this whole story, everything I'm talking about here is free and open source, you can use the, the JET approach. So the JET, the JET way of writing applications is to take a number of existing libraries, add some graphs and charts from Oracle on top, and give you templates and an architecture as a starting point so that you can create um, applications on a stable basis. It's very different to an application framework type approach. So if you're looking at Angular, for example, Angular is an application framework. It's a full stack. You you build your application on top of this existing stack. What JET is about is taking a number of libraries, combining them, adding some stuff on top, and trying to keep it as minimal and simple as possible. Um, so, of course, everyone that is at all interested in the JavaScript ecosystem starts by comparing all these different libraries. And what was nice about five or six years ago or 10 years ago, every week there would be a new Java server framework, right? There was Struts and Tapestry and Wicket, and there were hundreds of different Java server frameworks. You don't find that so much anymore. That innovation is now happening in the JavaScript space. So this is an indication as well that JavaScript is really 
becoming interesting for the enterprise. So you're seeing more and more of these libraries coming up, more and more um, components, more and more different solutions. Um, there's Grunt you know, for, for building your application, but there's also Gulp. Um, and as soon as you started learning Grunt and you think, ah, I, I can build my application, I, I know how to use Grunt, everyone tells you, no, 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 you should be using Gulp. Gulp is the way to do it. And then you spend some time learning Gulp and then, then you think, yes, I'm ready. And then everyone says, no, 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 you should use Brunch because apparently Brunch is the new Gulp. And it's a very volatile, very unstable ecosystem. It's very nice to play with. It's nice to create toy applications and it's nice to create games with because there's a very quick turnover. You can very quickly create your application, put it into production, and then you create another application, put it into production. But what if you are creating enterprise applications? What if you are creating larger applications that need to exist for a number of years? Is the JavaScript ecosystem stable enough? Does it provide enough stable libraries and solutions for that? And so this is what we are trying to, this question we're trying to answer by means of this uh, JET uh, toolkit. And aside from the libraries, there's also all the testing frameworks. Um, there's Yeoman for setting up your application, all kinds of different um, additional libraries as well. It's a very confusing, um, very um, contradictory um, um, ecosystem. So the first thing that you do at some point is you try and organize everything into categories. So you say, okay, there's Angular and there's Knockout and there's Backbone and there's all these um, application framework library type solutions. And then, then you say, okay, there's component libraries and there's module systems and there's build systems and there's testing frameworks and there's miscellaneous stuff like Yeoman and Node and Bower. And of course, there is no specification out there that ties all of these things together, which is when you begin to reappreciate Java EE which is completely based on specifications and agreements between organizations, which develops very slowly, but at least it's stable. This is unstable. So it's, it's, really, it's really a problem for, um, for doing large application development. Um, and you know, as soon as you start and you, you take some of these libraries and you use them and you think, yes, I'm doing great, and you run into a problem, what do you do? You go to Stack Overflow and you find the answer. And the answer depends on that you are using the library that you're using plus three other ones. But you're not using the three other ones. You're using yours plus two other ones. So all the answers that you find don't fit your scenario. And also, um, as soon as you're using a, a, a brand new library, you think, ah, oh, cool, there's a new library. I can use this. You start using it, and then you run into a problem. So then you write to the, to the community behind this library. There's no community, of course. It's completely new. It was just developed you know, last week. And the author of that library says to you, well, I'm doing something different now. It was, this, this was interesting last week. I'm doing something new this week. This, this is a very difficult ecosystem to take seriously for, for larger applications. Um, so the starting point for all of this is to take a step back and ask yourself, what are the requirements? because not all applications make sense as JavaScript applications. Not all applications should be mobile applications. For example, an air traffic control system should not be a mobile application. You need a large resolution, a large screen as an air traffic controller. You know? So that there's all kinds of situations where you don't want a mobile app or you don't want a JavaScript app in the browser. You need to really think about what are the needs of the application. And normally what you find is that it's the management, your management, that is pushing you to make these mobile apps and these browser apps. Um, and on the user side, it's not the users asking for those apps. It's the management of those users saying, we need to go mobile, we need to go browser. But the users of those apps are perfectly fine where they are with their existing systems. So you really need to try and push back that hype. And, and maybe if you wait long enough, if you wait like you know, five, six years, everything will go back to Java again <laughs> from JavaScript. Maybe, I don't know. But you, know, you need to try and push back on this, on this very strong hype that there is out there um, around JavaScript. Um, but for the cases where it makes sense, it makes sense. So ask yourself, um, you know, we need to have a responsive design application that should work on, on the browser, on the desktop, and on mobile phone. It should be modular. We want to have a single page application. That's the new architectural style for mobile apps. We need everything to be accessible for screen readers and, and keyboard and mouse and everything, all these um, devices. Um, we need to internationalize our application. We need to have security for our application. How do we do that in JavaScript? Um, we need to um, optimize the performance. There are standards, there are some standards 
standards, we need to conform to those, we need documentation, we need to go somewhere when there's, when there's a problem. We don't want to go to one guy somewhere um, that created this cool library, we want to go to an organization um, that we have paid money for maybe um, to give us services so that you know, we can really rely on the, um, on the architecture that we've chosen. Um, so in the case of Oracle, what we've done is, as I said, we have gone out and we have looked at the available libraries so we're not, going to, we're not going to reinvent the wheel. We have a JavaScript toolkit that is based on top of these two libraries in particular. So if you go to um, requirejs.org, you will see this is a free and open source library for modularity in JavaScript. And if you go to knockoutjs.com, you will see it's a free and open source library for data binding, for connecting the business logic to the view. And these two libraries are special as well in that they do one thing. So require does modularity, knockout does data binding, and that's all that they do. And we've taken those two libraries, included jQuery, because everyone that does JavaScript does jQuery. We've included jQuery UI as the basis of our widget set. We've added widgets on top, and those widgets are all on GitHub. So here I'm on GitHub, github.com slash oracle slash oracle jet, all the components are here. If you want, since these are jQuery UI widgets, you can take these components and include them in your existing application, whatever it is. So if you're using Angular, if you're using some other framework or library, you can take these and include them. You don't pay anything. You don't have to ask anybody. You can just take these and include them in your application. And what would you, would you have then? You would have components like these. So these are pretty standard components. But at the end, you see charts and graphs and so on. Okay, so this is what they look like. So if you are in, um, in need of charts and graphs, this is really what um, JET is strongly focused on because Oracle applications need to display data in different ways. So we've created all these different uh, widgets on top of jQuery UI, and we are looking at the web component specification at the moment. And so as the standards change, as web components become more, um, more well-defined and well-organized, um, well we're going to be moving from jQuery UI to web components. So we are following um, the standards um, as they come up. So then um, you will take these charts, um, and when you click on one of those buttons, um, you will see that this is the definition of that chart. So here you can see there's a chart on the left, and there is the JavaScript, and here is the HTML. So this is literally a cookbook. You can copy that HTML into your application, you can copy this JavaScript into your application, and then you'll have a chart that looks like this. So um, there's a complete cookbook with all the code for all the components that you want to use. Okay, so there's require and there's knockout as our starting point. And we get, as a result of that, we get JET. So it's Oracle JavaScript extension, it, it extends JavaScript toolkit. So again, not a framework and it's not a library, it's not JET.js, it's T for toolkit, a, a, a box full of libraries and solutions and technologies that you can use as the basis of your own application. And these are the base libraries, so require, I've mentioned for modularity, knockout for data binding, jQuery, standard JavaScript library, jQuery UI for the widget basis, JET, these are the components on top of jQuery UI, and hammer for touch on mobile devices. Um, so here is what a JET application looks like. Um, so let me first run this application. And so I actually have it running already. Uh, here, somewhere, okay, here it is. Okay, so you can see here, hello world. So I'll change this to hello Zagreb, save it. And we see in the browser, hello Zagreb. So there's also a very nice connection between this browser and my development environment. I can make a change here I can press save, control S, and I look in the browser and the refresh is automatically done. This development environment is called NetBeans. NetBeans is free and open source as well, netbeans.org. You can go to the download page and you will see that there is a column here for HTML5 JavaScript. This gives you a development environment with no Java tooling. It's purely a JavaScript HTML development tool. And when I look in my um, when I look in here, well, I have some other plugins installed, but in principle, if I choose only this one, I will only have this category of tooling available. What's interesting is, you may not know this, but we are moving NetBeans to Apache. 
So NetBeans is in the process of becoming an Apache project. It's in the Apache incubator. So if you are missing any tooling in NetBeans, you can join the Apache project, and you can commit code um, to the Apache uh, NetBeans project once we, are, uh, once we are there as a top-level project. But um, anyway, so the point is, I now have this application. You can see here, um, Hello Zagreb. Um, so the integration is very nice between the development tool and the browser. And um, when I look in this tab over here, when I switch, you can see here that there is a different content. You can see here library and performance and graphics. When I look in my application structure, I can see here there is here graphics and there is graphics. So here is one module. This is, in Jet terminology, a module. When I look inside the code, you can see on the right-hand side there, there's a define block. This is from require. So we are using requires modularity. We have a view on top of that, and we have a convention over configuration structure. Because in JavaScript, the problem is you take someone else's project, you inherit someone else's project, one of your colleagues. You look at the project, and you have no idea what's going on. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a standard way for JavaScript applications to be structured? So with Jet, we are saying anything inside of the uh, folder view models, um, any JavaScript in there is a module. And if there is a matching HTML file with the same name in the views folder, then that is the view of that um, business logic. So we have here a, a modular structure. And you can see that back again in the application. You can see here home and people and library, and each of these, here's home, here's the home module, here's the people module. So it's very easy to understand an application when you take it over from somebody else. The other thing that is really nice is, let's take a look at this library um, module here. Okay, so library module, um, and I'll open the, the HTML here. Now, what do we see here? We can see here that there is here an element called customer. Now, obviously, customer is not an HTML5 tag. This is an element that I have defined myself. There is a, there is a mechanism in JET for defining your own elements. So here you can see a, a folder called customer. Inside of that, there is a, a file called loader.js, which defines a new component called customer defined from this HTML file and this JSON file. Now, what this is, is a web component. So you can create web components and include them in your Oracle Jet application. And the idea is ultimately that these, these components, so this is called in Jet terminology a, a, um, a composite component architecture. So this is a composite component that you can create for your Jet application and then zip it up and share it with other people creating their applications in your, same, in your organization. Or we're going to create a marketplace where people can upload their components and share them with each other. So you can see here that we have here multiple different customers and for each of them, um, the customer element is used to define what they look like. And here is, here is what they look like. So you can see an H2 and an H4 for each of them. Um, so we have here a, an architecture for plugging in additional components and for making those components available further. But also, what is um, interesting with Oracle is there is something called the Application Builder Cloud Service. So on the one hand, there is JET, which is this toolkit for JavaScript, but there is something else called Application Builder Cloud Service, which looks like this. This is, you can see I'm in the browser, this is a drag and drop environment in the browser for creating applications. And this is for the so-called citizen developer, the business developer, not an actual programmer, but, but somebody in a suit and a tie, and you give them this application to create their applications in. But the nice thing is you can extend this application with additional components. So I have here a special component that I can drag and drop, and this is a complete component for um, um, defining a, a name and, and a surname or whatever of a particular customer, and here's another one. So this is a pretty complex component that I created myself because the application builder cloud service has an extension mechanism. Um, and in that extension mechanism, you can create additional components, you can include them in your um, application builder cloud service, and you can give that to your um, citizen developer, the guy in a suit somewhere, um, to create those applications based on top of this platform. So a platform for your business uh, developers. Um, okay, so um, don't have much time left, and I want to leave um, two minutes for questions. This whole Oracle Jet story, 
to summarize it, it is aimed at medium to advanced JavaScript developers. You need to have some JavaScript knowledge. But once you have that, you can go to the, um, to the website. Um, here's oraclejet.org. And if you click on Get Started, you will see that there are Yeoman generators. So everyone in the JavaScript ecosystem uses Yeoman. So you can, instead of doing Yo Angular or Yo something else, you could do Yo Oracle Jet. It will set up your application, create some modules for you, and give you a starting point for your application. And the applications you can create look a bit like this. So here's the reference implementation of an Oracle Jet application. You can see that when I make this smaller, now it resembles a mobile phone. Automatically, everything refits itself depending on the resolution, but also, on the left-hand side, you can see this typical menu from a mobile device. Whereas if I am in the um, desktop version of the application, I get a standard menu bar. So all of these concerns are built in. And as I go further into the application, um, you will see that I stay in the index file. So this is a single page application, so index HTML, whatever, whatever we do, we stay inside index HTML. So you, so you could see this as kind of being a, 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 a tool, this application, to help you create well-structured JavaScript applications with all the typical concerns that you're going to have when you're creating enterprise applications. Um, so it's aimed at medium to advanced JavaScript developers. It's based on open source libraries. It's open source itself. It's for Oracle, it is focused on data visualization. So for cloud data, for all these different cloud services, you know, platform as a service, uh, application as a service, all of those services need an application to render that data in. Um, it is enterprise ready in the sense that it has modularity, accessibility, internationalization, all of these enterprise concerns built in. It's free and it's on, on GitHub. And there are a lot of mobile features, so we're focusing increasingly on mobile development. And here's a nice example of that. This is not an Oracle application. This is a, um, a someone outside of Oracle, um, a company creating an application for truck drivers um, in Antwerp. So they're delivering goods in the harbor. They need to know where to go. So they type in a particular number where their warehouse is, where they need to deliver the stuff, and they see on that app where they need to go. This is an app created in Jet. And how you get from JavaScript to mobile is, in the, ca in the case of Jet, Cordova. So another standard tool for converting a JavaScript application to a mobile application. Um, and so these are, these are the mobile features, you know, the swipe and this touch and this themes and the skinning and this, all these concerns typical to mobile applications. And again, it's all free, so you can, uh, you can just use it. There's also a, a Twitter handle, Oracle Jet. So if you want to tweet about this, please use the Oracle Jet twi Twitter handle. There's a YouTube channel, there's a Facebook page, there's a free three-week course that you can take. If you go to the Oracle Jet uh, homepage and you go to... Um, so here's on the home page. If you go to um, examples, you will see here different templates for getting started, but a hands-on lab and online training. So this will give you um, an entry point to a three-week course. It's all on YouTube. Every week you get 10 new lessons, you get homework, you get a certificate at the end to prove that you've completed it, and you learn everything about this, um, this uh, toolkit. Um, and I think those are the most important points uh, I wanted to make. Um, there are um, standards, and we follow the standards, and these are the key points. It's if you are a JavaScript developer, and remember, this is purely front-end. This is a purely front-end solution. It's purely JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. What you do on the back-end is up to you. You can use Java EE, you can use Spring, you can use Node.js, whatever you want, and typically you will serve up some REST endpoints, and those REST endpoints you will integrate into this front-end technology. So the JET story is purely a front-end story, a, a, a toolkit with solutions for front-end development. What you do on the back-end is completely up to you. You can do anything you like um, there. Um, and that is the story. This is a picture of the citizen developer, by the way. This is what citizen developers look like, and they're happy with this uh, uh, JET uh, technology because it, it enables you to very quickly and in a stable manner, as stable as possible, uh, put your uh, applications together. Thank you very much. So, are there any questions about this from anybody? Yes. Well, and this is what the cookbook is for. So what you would do is you would copy and paste um, from the cookbook 
directly into your components. So let's see here, for example, um, there is this page here, um, graphics. You can see this chart. Now this chart, I didn't do any coding for this chart. I went to the cookbook, I copied, so I can see it's graphics, so I look in graphics. I copied all this stuff, so here are the properties. Here are all the properties of that chart, and here is the view. So I'll go to graphics, here's the view. And this is, what, this is just copied and pasted. And you can see here that there is this um, data bind. This is knockout. And I have here OJ component. And I have a component defined called OJ chart. And here are the properties of OJ chart. And here, uh, here I can see all of the properties of OJ chart. So if I have here instead OJ button, and I look in the code completion here, I can see the properties of only OJ button. So there's all kinds of tools to help you, but it's really a lot of cutting and pasting from the cookbook. And if you, if you really don't want to do any coding at all, then that application build a cloud service is a good solution because it's all about dragging and dropping stuff together um, and creating an application um, in the browser via drag and drop tools. So it's it's really uh, this this is a set of it's really a platform of solutions at um, at open world java 1 this was called um project um uh, visual cloud so th it's it's really a, a visual cloud platform which on the one hand has tools for developers in the sense of javascript uh, toolkit and and all these uh, javascript uh, code things and on the other hand a full blown drag and drop environment in the browser that um, a business developer can use so it's for the business and for the developer a, a solid solution Okay, thank you, Kertjan, very much. Thank you very much for coming.